drinking in the wheelchair race. Five doors clean up, no more, no less. Five little bees, they're missing all the rest. I haven't been casted in about 16 years, but I'm also wearing different shapes all the time because I'm just working off of that mold. So I do, I do recommend that patients that are mature fits uh, don't get recasted. If you're if you're just losing volume or something and you need or, or, or gaining whatever you need an adjustment, you can do a global adjustment either way and keep your same trim lines and you don't have to get used to a whole new. You shouldn't need to be wrapped in bandage if you're stable. You should be able to work off of a mold that you're wearing and, and, and be comfortable with it. And the biggest thing that used to really, really astonish me with Michael is he would, he would be able to tell me what was going to happen before it happened. And and I always do that with my patients too, especially when they're new, because he knew about shapes and how things had to obtain a shape and it's going to do this and then it's going to do that. And then he knew all that just from fitting so many repeatedly. He got to know this stuff so well that he could tell you before it happened. And so when it happened, like in the early days, you'd be walking along, you know, you're getting used to it now. And then the next day, it doesn't work anymore. Like you lost, you changed shape or. And so you can get really frustrated quickly. So when he would tell me that these things are coming or, you know, you're getting ready to, you're probably going to need a new socket soon or something like that. And then when it would happen, you wouldn't get so, you wouldn't get so upset. You know what I mean? Where before you didn't, you don't know. It's just like, you don't know. You just think it's you all the time. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's really a lot of education with the patient. And it's a lot of education, and they got to be willing to do their part. But and it shouldn't be too bad. But uh, if you're going to just fight it as a patient, you never win that fight. You never win it because you're just not going to win it. So, in order for you to be healthy, you got to be up and moving. We're meant to move. So, if we're not moving, <laughs> we're not grooving. That's for sure. <laughs> so, it's very well, important. My question is to follow up is. Seeing that you had your intuition when you were young and a lot of things that happened to you, how would you, how much would you say age played a role in just your, your mindset and your grit to just keep moving forward? I mean, you were out of the hospital in like two weeks, you know, you were, you hit the ground running, you mm. went to ride the wine <laughs> on the canoe with your friends while you still have your stitches. I mean, if you were at this age... I just had my youth. You know, it's harder when you're older. It's definitely harder. There's no question about it. I always feel for the people in their 70s or 80s that lose a limb. How do you, you, know, how do you even begin to, to, to do that 50%? You get what I'm saying? Because you've been so long with a leg. And when you're wired for a leg, it, you're, you know, people say, do you get used to it? You get used to it to an extent, but I'm always wired to have a leg. It's not that I can really remember what it's like because it's been, I've been without it longer now, but you're wired, you're wired. Like if you're congenital, you don't miss anything because you're, you never knew, you know what I mean? So once you're wired up and you have like a trauma or something like that and lose your leg, it, you still, you still, you know, you get used to it. But you don't, it's not like you just forget about it, kind of that used to it. You know what I mean? You still know you've got a prosthetic on. So, yeah. Yeah, the wrestling in high school and things like that helped me a lot because, as you know, that sport is, is tough. And, uh, well, I was probably in the best shape of my life then and when that happened. So, that's a blessing. Yeah. That's the, hence the two weeks in the hospital. That's, that's how that happened. How is the... the uh, the limb loss community. The community itself, that's what I was going to say is, so there wasn't a lot of wars going on then at that time. So like, and, and all, we didn't have really have the internet. So we just had like old books from the fifties in the library. So it was like to get information, you'd open these books and you'd see these wooden legs again. You're like, that's not what I'm interested <laughs> in. I want to talk about these flexible inner sockets. So they were doing a lot of that out west. Out west seems to be a little bit ahead on the technology. So out in California, they had a lot of what they called narrow ML sockets and things like that. So I was interested in that and 
looking into other things, uh, different shops out in Oklahoma City and things like that to think about. But we were like under the radar kind of where now everybody assumes I'm a, a veteran or something <laughs> and like they're always thanking me for my service and I got to like correct them because I don't want to, I help veterans, but I'm not a veteran and I, I don't want to claim that I am. So I would never want to do that. So I do, uh, it, it's a, just a really bizarre time. It's really acceptable now and it's just really more common now. Like, you know, like you see a lot more on TV and commercials and things like that. Um, a friend of mine, Sarah, she does a Nike thing where they make a sole, a running sole for her prosthetic where she's collaborated with them. So she's got a commercial and it's just a lot more exposed. It, it's kind of cool. It's, it's kind of cool to see it. It was kind of, it was really different before. It was all cosmetically driven before and function was second. Where now function's number one, cosmetics. Some people want cover, some people don't. Where before it was strictly had to look like a leg and yeah. And even had my father uh, sold because I like the old leg, look more like a leg. You know what I mean? And he's looking at this like, I think it's crazy looking. You know what I mean? So he liked the old leg better, but of course I had to tell him, you don't have to wear it. So this is what you're going to be looking at. So I want to speak on that because as, What's that? as long as, as known you, so I've known you since 2014, as long as I've known you, you've always showed your metal. Mm -hmm. You're always showing your pylon, be it winter, fall, spring. Oh yeah, the short. The well, well, that that on. that is because I work with a, a baker's oven every day. So I'm I'm in a I'm I'm not in an oven. I'm I'm working with an oven every day. So our shop can get hot. I find it to be a lot more convenient to wear shorts as an amputee when you got to dress the prosthesis and stuff. So and I kind of go from the house to the truck, and I really I depend on my vehicle a lot. So I guess I'm not going to get stuck when it's cold out. <laughs> I hope not, but I just go from there to the shop and it, you know, I'm warm. So I do wear the shorts all year round and, but I use it for an educational piece and I want people to ask me about it and it doesn't matter if they're kids or adults or anything in between. I, I want to be able to tell them what they need to know. You know what I mean? So they might have another family member that I get a lot of that, you know, people approach me and their uncle or so-and-so has just lost a leg and you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. So it's, it's kind of cool like that, you know, not to mention that the microprocessors are really cool. I mean, they really changed everything for us as far as where we can go and how safe we get there. So before even being young and active, I was on a hydraulic, without the microprocessor years ago before they came out and it wasn't as safe to be going into down trails and things in the woods where it could be a little risky because you didn't have that resistance that stance flexion resistance and stuff to ride so these things just opened up which is amazing because you know when you're strong and all that and you could deal with all that back you know back then we muscle controlled our legs where now we just kind of put them on cruise control and drive them. We're still firing muscles in the socket, but we really like kicked out, heel strike, pull the femur back. I mean, it was all like, cause it was just a hydraulic. Now, now we, you know, we got stance flexion. We got first, second, third mode, walk to run mode. I mean, we got submersible microprocessor knees. We got them where if I pick up a patient, all my settings automatically ramp up in the knee for safety reasons. That's basically for the guys in the service when they were carrying backpacks, that's what they designed it around. Um, so yeah, the microprocessors are, if you're above knee is a highly recommended uh, for safety. And uh, they're just amazing where they let you go safely, mm -hmm. where I, I, I wouldn't go even in my younger years. So that's what I was saying earlier about, you know, wanting to work with my body, kind of dependent on it. That was the kind of thing that kind of broke me the most, you know, in the beginning when I lost my leg was, oh, how am I going to do this now? I always would rely on that, you know what I mean? Like kind of thing. And so, but the biggest thing was, man, I'm not going to be able to go in the woods anymore. You know what I mean? It was really like a thing for me because I spent a lot of time back there and it, 
it just but I'm able to return with these microprocessors. I'm able to return to the woods like, and I have been since I've been wearing this since, since like 02. Super safe and, and really pushing it, like going to, you know, down some really crazy trails, crossing creeks, all kinds of wild stuff you wouldn't even think of doing on an old hydraulic. Even though you had your youth and your strength, it would have been too safe. Well, now I'm a little older and I can get back into the woods. I think it's really cool. Yeah, it's really something that's kind of gotten given back to me, should we say. You know, it was kind of, the, it was probably one of the biggest things that kind of bummed me out. But it never bummed me out of the game. You know what I mean? It just bummed me out. Never took me out. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and just to kind of follow up on, on that, what would you say is one of the best things that have come, that has come from you living with an amputation that you owe it to your amputation basically well i don't know where i would have been otherwise really when you come to think of it and the the fact that i can touch a lot of people with it it's kind of a gift in a way um some of us in our youth are pretty wild we're like wild child you know and uh it kind of it's kind of a constant kind of reminder thing that there's limits to things and you got to really pay attention to all the things and it's it's just an eye opener like that you got to use it to your advantage you know um some way somehow you know that's the only uh my father really uh, instilled a good work ethic in me years ago and so it's just you just move on you got to move on and you got to you got to take that negative and make it into some a positive some way you know so i i like the contact with the people and everything and, and how i can help and touch somebody like that and brighten their day or something it's it's kind of cool when that happens it doesn't happen every day but it happens and it and, and sometimes it happens when you don't even know it happened and that's another thing that's pretty cool you know so yeah, that kind of stuff I really enjoy. Yep. And, and if there was something that you wish you had known when you had your amputation, that you would tell other amputees who, or other people who are going to get an amputation soon or have just gotten an amputation, what's that thing? I like to give them education on, on what to look look for what's kind of coming down the road i go to a lot of hospitals and visit people that are you know freshly amputated and injured and stuff and uh i try to give them some inspiration try to let them know what's coming around that corner that that's one of the biggest things like we talked about earlier that takes a lot of anxiety out of a patient that's not knowing you know what i mean so you kind of can tell them this here and then this is going to happen this and you need to watch for this and this is what you need to do here and things like that some coaching per se uh would be yeah i think that's that's one of my uh i i met an amish guy while i was working in uh, that south philly shop back in the early 90s and uh we became really good friends and uh i ended up going and taking him to new york to get an arm he was an arm man but it seems like every year, his name's Henry, and it seems like every year and around October harvest time, I get a phone call and somebody else got hurt and uh, he wants me to go see him. And uh, I think I'm up to about maybe 12 Amish folks now or something. So, uh, yeah, the, the latest one was up in Philadelphia. I went up to see this boy. He was only 22 years old. Yep. And he lost his leg as a hip dysartic, so he was up real high. And so I just, you know, point them in the right directions and let them know what's what and uh, best I can. And that's something I do, you know, and hopefully it helps them. And sometimes I, I do follow ups with them or I ask them to get back with me when they get their device and things like that. And but uh, yeah, that's that's one of the coolest parts about it, I guess. You and um, if you have to give uh, uh, advice, or not if you have to give advice, what's your word of wisdom, I guess, for all other amputees that are out there, both new amputees, about to become amputees, and <laughs> older amputees? If there's a word of advice or wisdom 
Um, I guess like, you know, be willing to do your part, be willing to invest time. Uh, you know, the old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. These good outcomes, you know, these, these dreamy things we see here and there, they come with work, you know what I mean? And that's what we need to, we need to know. So my, my wisdom would be to just work at it and, and, and not give up. And, uh, you know, you have a whole host of resources out there with these computers now that, like I said, the library and the book from the 50s that we didn't have. So utilize this stuff. Don't get too hung up on it because, you know, you'll see things on the computer of people doing things and don't set your goals too crazy right away where you're going to let yourself down. You know what I mean? And, and, and talk to other amputees and watch this YouTube video. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so we hope to have more. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you very much, Steve, for uh -huh. your time. Really appreciate it. Really enjoyed hearing your story. And we hope that we were able to inspire other people who are living with limb loss or are part of the limb loss community. See you next time. Mama, she's got one foot and daddy ain't got none. Two folks got but five toes, they can't walk near mine run. Rock and roll and hopping round the place. Get to drinking in their wheelchair race. Five toes clean up, no more, no less. Five little bees, they're missing all the rest.